morning and <laughs> if you have been trying to paint hair and it turns out looking like a helmet or it just looks like it was cut out and pasted on your subject then today's uh, live is for you. So uh, this is sort of a continuation of our um, facial features and, and working our way into portraits kind of uh, series that I've been doing the last couple of weeks. I will get back to the um, landscapes and still lifes and things like that, but I just thought I'd do a little concentration on just facial features. Since faces take so long, uh, I had to break it down. So let's just jump into this. All right, so today's uh, reference, this one here, it's from Pixabay, and the reference image is posted underneath the video. I chose this one because of the beautiful light, uh, but also the interesting shapes in her braid as well. But uh, there's a couple of things here that will be really important in terms of learning how to paint hair. All right, so uh, first of all, with my drawing here, what I have done is I have uh, really indicated the the direction of the, the hair, the way that it flows and things. Each of these shapes is well defined and that's so important. If you don't define um, each of the segments of hair really well, you will struggle with doing this. The other thing that we're going to really notice is that the... Um, uh, is that the, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second, uh, that the hair isn't painted or drawn from root to tip. Very important. Each time your hair bends, it, uh, like you can see my hair here, like, so part of it is bending, so it gets a highlight right there and here, but then in between where it bends in a different direction, it goes dark, <laughs> all backwards here. So it goes dark. Uh, and you will see that very often. And uh, if you don't pay attention to where those highlights and shadows are, you're, you're going to struggle with getting realistic hair. So in my drawing, I'm really emphasizing the direction, but also I'm not connecting. So for example, let me zoom in. All right, so let's take this this part of the braid here. Look what I've done. I have drawn where the the hair direction is, but I didn't draw it from from here all the way over to here. I stopped. I tapered it off, and that's going to remind me that that's where the highlight belongs. Okay, so I don't mind having a lot of uh, pencil lines where the shadows are darker. but I don't want a lot of lines that are going through the highlights because I need to keep that paint very thin, uh, diluted in order for me to be able to uh, show the highlight properly. Okay, so let me zoom out for a second. In order for this not to look like it is cut out, I want to incorporate some of my background into the hair itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, say, this area here and paint some nice yellow in those sections. So the yellow, uh, I'm just going to use a gamboge for this. Uh, and I'm choosing gamboge because it is sunlit and I can use some of that gamboge to create this green in the background as well. So I don't have to paint individual hairs at this point. So I'm just going to paint the general uh, color placement. That's all I'm doing. No detail, color placement, and that's it. Um, let me just try to... My hat, chat is hidden, and I want to make sure that I can see that in case you have a question or something for me. There we go. Okay. So if you have a question today, make sure that you put it in capitals so that I can find it easily. Thank you. And uh, okay, so this whole section here is going to come in and it's going to have a lot of yellow. Now, I want you to notice one thing that I'm doing. This is a squirrel hairbrush. You can see that when it gets wet, 
it actually has a um, bend in it, right? So if I press on my palette like this, that's how my brush ends up. And I can use this to help create some of this sunlit area because not all of it is yellow. There's some are parts of it that, you know, the, the light is blowing out all the color, so you get this white area here. So I wanted to incorporate that into the hair. Okay, outside where the hair is, that can just be solid, but I want to bring some of that into the hair by spreading, bending my brush like this, I am spreading the bristles, which separates the hairs on the tip. And that's going to give me that sort of wispy, wispy feel to this. Okay, so we've got some of that there and some of that over here on the right hand side as well. That looks like a pretty darn bright yellow, and it looks kind of crazy at the moment. But as you remember from some of my previous demos, I will start off bright because I know that dulling down is a piece of cake, but getting it bright again uh, is pretty impossible. <laughs> if, you've, if you've lost the brightness, you've lost it. All right, let's do a little more. Um, I want to do some up in here. Some of this is almost getting kind of gold looking. And uh, I think I'm going to start incorporating a little bit of maybe quinacridone gold. That looks like a nice sort of orangey gold. So I'm going to use a little quinacridone gold, which is a lovely transparent color. And I'm going to incorporate some of that into these areas here. I'll blend that right into her hair even. But you'll notice, please notice the direction of, of my brush strokes are following the direction of her hair. I am not really aiming for perfect smoothness at this point. Part of the reason I'm using a little bit of a a little bit of a dry brush maybe technique is that it um, it starts to replicate the flow of the hair. Right? And that will help sort of knit together my lighter tones and my darker tones. Maybe a little bit more yellow right in here. Make it a little bit more diluted, which will soften soften the look a little bit. Gamboge, that's what I was using. There's still some extra actual light areas in there so that'll that will help as I'm uh, finishing this up but that's going to help with the start of the um, those like little wispy hairs on that side okay so leave some of the white paper that's very important all right so I'm going to start off once again with uh, maybe some of my gamboge and queen gold mixed together And I'm going to start coming in on her hair. Now this is going to look very blonde. Um, and that's okay because the highlights in her hair are lighter. I will, you know, you can always cover up light areas. You can't cover up dark. Um, but I want to get some of the highlights uh, established right off the beginning. 
All right, so I'm going to do this top part where the crown of her head is there, you know, where that part right there. And maybe I'll just do this in simpler steps and I will just do all of her hair in this color. Sometimes easier to break it down into like layers like this. Uh, just makes it a little bit more sort of digestible and understandable. But with every brush stroke, I'm still going in the direction of her hair. Whichever direction her um, each of those braids goes, I am following with my brush. I did a demonstration um, a while ago, it was a while ago now, but uh, it was of uh, doing blonde hair. And it was a little different than this one. Um, you know, each time you paint hair, and de depending on the different types of hair and so on, they are going to have, uh, you know, different, uh, different characteristics that you'll have to consider as you're painting. When I first started painting, I had these, these brushes that were soft like this, and I thought, oh, those are kind of useless. What good's that? They bend over. They don't come back to a nice point. Uh, <laughs> but now I realize that they're, they really are useful, that you can splay the bristles, that you can use very light strokes and things like that. They're very um, pop, um, close. Is it possible to put closed captions on the video? You should be able to do that on your uh, browser, actually, on your, um, in the little gear s section, I believe you can find closed caption or you might see uh, CC. It'll say closed captioned right under your video and uh, that should add uh, the captions for you. Linda, I hope that helps. Um, I don't think once I've started, I can start editing how I do things. Uh, at least I haven't figured that out anyway. I think I tried that last week. Uh, somebody asked about closed captioning and I, I couldn't alter things once, once I'm live. Okay, so I've got some, some yellow everywhere. Let me just um, zoom out so you can see all of it. All right, so I've got all of her hair. Um, and I've, I've got this sort of light tone through there. And I see some of this golden color in her hair. Um, it didn't print out quite as gold as it appears over here, but, uh, but I've made it quite gold. So now I need to start darkening things up. And what I would recommend is uh, the that you don't jump too many values all at once, that you go in smaller increments as you build this. Don't get too impatient with your with your uh, painting here. Um, I am painting on dry paper. Yes, um, it's unavailable again, Shelley. Um, the uh, closed captions, I presume you're talking about. I don't think I can add them in now. Um, let me just, I'll see if I can. If I can't, I can't. Uh, I'm looking and not seeing where I can add that. Uh, 
it is not going to allow me to um, add closed captioning at this point. Uh, I might be able to do so on the replay, but I, I will try. <laughs> okay, now I've got to get those screens back. There we go. There's one. Okay. Um, Oh, there is on your phone? Well, that's so un unusual. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, as I was saying, I want to start building up some of these darker values. And don't, don't jump too many increments. Don't go from really light to really dark all of a sudden. Let's build this up. So I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna. And let's just do a sort of a ghost version of where we're headed with this. So I see that most of the light is on this side. So I can come in and start building the, the darker tones in here. So I'm going to start in here. And the flow of your brush should follow the flow of the hair. This is so important when you're painting hair. Uh, it's really easy to just take your brush and do a straight line. Uh, straight lines are much easier than curving lines and things like that. So this is on dry and you can see that I'm actually getting, you know, some some dry brush marks. Uh, that actually is not a bad thing to have. Where where your brush starts to um, lose its paint, you know, it starts to run out of color. It will come across as a highlight, but it will feel more connected than if I just. Um, just stopped suddenly. So I'm sort of sweeping a little bit as I do this. <laughs> so some of you are typing the the uh, helpful <laughs> things in the chat. Thank you so much. So that those without the closed captioning can read this. I'll see if I can add it after the video ends, but I'm um, not sure if I can. All right, so now we're getting into each of the individual um, segments of hair, and it's very important that you um, treat each of those segments as its own kind of thing. So I'm coming in and looking for the, the direction, but also where the highlight is. There's not as many really light areas over here, so I don't have to leave too much. But you'll notice I'm not just doing one stroke. I am I'm kind of coming from the left, coming from the right, and leaving leaving that little gap in between. So that's important. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there's that uh, brokenness <laughs> to my stroke. And that's going to help get us a good start to this. All right, so I'm going to move down into the individual braids. Now, I don't want to use a brush that's too large. I also don't want to use one that's really, really small. So uh, I'm using, what is this, a number eight, and I'm working on, I think this is a 9 by 12 uh, pad of, or a block of watercolor paper. My paper, by the way, is Arches 140 pound cold press paper. So 
See that little flick I'm doing? As I, as I come into the highlight, it's a little flick with my brush. And I find that that can be really helpful for making that stroke look tapered off. Not a lot in my brush at the moment. Uh, these are small mm -hmm. spaces. If I load my brush up too much, I really will um, end up filling in what I'm doing. And for those of you that are looking for the magic brush to do this with, uh, a soft bristle brush that bends like this, most of them will sort of split open like that. But they actually create a brush that has a similar feature to it. This is called a Filbert Rake brush, and it's a synthetic hair. It's not a, a, a squirrel hair or anything like that. It's a synthetic brush, uh, but you can see that the bristles are tapered at the, at the point. Let me zoom in so you can see this. All right, so you can see how the brush has been designed so that the end of the bristles is very wispy. Okay, I'll zoom out again and I'll do a couple of strokes with this brush so you can see how it behaves fairly similarly. And this is not an expensive brush. Um, I have to get used to it after using the other one. Okay, this one I have to sort of fill up a little bit more because it runs out really fast. But you can see that I can get something similar. It looks a little different, a little bit different, but not too much. But the big thing is not the, not the brush you're using so much as your technique, right? So you need to practice doing this so that you have an idea of, uh, you know, how to do it. If you do it once or twice and it doesn't work, well, that's not enough practice. You have to keep at it until you really get a good feel and control over your brush. The paint consistency, I'm not jumping a lot of values. I am giving my brush a little blot before I paint so that it's not overloaded with color, right? Just quick, quick little touch to my paper towel. But notice the, the areas of light that I'm leaving in each of these braids. Now this is just to start. I am going to have to build, build, build on this. You might be tempted to use something like a fan brush. Here's what I don't like about a fan brush. It makes all the lines too perfectly uniform and even. And then your hair looks a little bit contrived.
One thing I've always compared painting hair to is painting ribbons. If you want to start out painting uh, the look of hair, try practicing painting ribbons because we get the same sort of highlight and the ins and outs with a ribbon that you do with hair. And if you can paint a ribbon, then you should be able to use the same concepts to paint hair. All right, so there we have a start. Her hair looks a little, we went from blonde and now she's a little red, but now we are going to, uh, we were gonna start building this up even more. So I'm gonna take that same uh, burnt sienna and I'll begin to darken it, dull it, cool it down as well with some blue. So I'm going to take some, uh, I'll use ultramarine blue today. That was too much. Look how black that got all of a sudden. So I don't want to jump that many values. So I'm going to still keep it in the brown family, but a little bit darker than what I just had. There we go. Spread the bristles out. Give it a blot. You can see how my brush is fanned out like that. And and I can also sort of like either paint chisel, the chisel side of the brush as I start. And then open it up. When I say open it up, I mean like let it go flatter so that it's the width of the brush instead of this side of the brush. And I can create some beautiful transitions this way. And I'm using a really light touch, uh, just like a feather. You can see a nice flow to her hair here. Um, you can tell what the shape is because of how I have, um, you know, laid in those strokes, the direction. Okay, I can't keep building up on here until it's dry. So I'm going to move on and I will carry on throughout the hair. And I may do this three, four, even five times in order to build up to what I'm looking for. I'm going to turn this because the way I'm working right now, I know my hand is blocking the view. So I'm going to turn this, let's turn my reference as well, and work in a way that's easier to pull the strokes towards myself.
What will really make it look natural is the the gradual build up. Don't don't jump to don't get impatient and jump too quickly. The consistency of my paint. Uh, at this point, I would say it is, it, it's fairly runny, but it's got enough color in it uh, to be a mid value. It's, it still needs to be a bit runny, but as I said, I'm blotting my brush, right? Taking the extra out of the belly. So I am not painting straight through the highlight and everything. I know we feel like, you know, hair is connected to the head and it's connected to the tip. Like if I hold my hair here, it's, it's all one continuous hair, but, uh, we don't necessarily want to paint it that way because it will look like spaghetti. Anybody there familiar with spaghetti hair? I've painted a lot of spaghetti hair in my time. Before I, before I finally figured this out. <laughs> If it starts to look too scratchy at this point, you know that your paint is a little bit too dry. So I'm gonna add just a little water, just a little, I just dip the tip of my brush in my water and add just a little bit more. And I get the flow back. Uh, if you are painting a section and you've, you've put in strokes like I just did, don't continue putting it over and over and over that spot because it'll end up just filling in. All right, so I have a little bit more up here to do, but you can see that this is a slow build, but the result is so nice. much more convincing than making continuous strokes. All right, so I'm going to continue adding. I haven't painted her skin tones or anything. I won't bother with that today, but uh, for some of these little hairs here at the side, I will use a the same method. Really try not to make them overly straight. Hair, uh, you know, hair un is un very unusual for hair to be perfectly straight. So it, it's usually got some flow to it, especially if there's a little wind or if it's a little tousled or messy. Uh, you know, you're going to get little changes in direction all over the place. All right, let's start building this up even more. I'm going to darken my burnt sienna with some um, ultramarine blue, and that's going to make it more brown. 
So that's going to give me some of the browns that I need for some of the darkest shadows. Each time I'm adding a shadow, I'm not just going over the entire section that I just did. So for here, in this big section, for example, I see that there are some, some darks here. Now, I'm not going to go all through everything that I just did. I might put a stroke or two for sure, but I'm not going to redo and just cover up what I've done. I want all those those streaks and layers to show through. You may get an occasional stroke that goes through like that. And that's perfectly fine. Oops. Wrong blue I went into there. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. If you keep it mostly burnt sienna, it'll stay brown. If you add too much of the um, Ultramarine blue, it will turn quite black, actually, or gray. So if you want to keep it in the brown family, uh, just keep more of the burnt sienna in there. It's hard to get into some of these little corners. You know, when you get something like this and you're trying to tuck into there, you might find it helpful. You see the angle of my brush. Start like this and and brush in different direction, like brush in a fan direction. So there's the the dark sections are a little smaller than the previous section. Like each time you layer and you're working your way to the darks, the darks consume less of the space. If after I've got all of this on here, I feel like, oh, those highlights are too bright. Like I said at the beginning, if I can always tone them down. But it's important that I maintain these shapes uh, right at the beginning, like right at the start. I've only used one brush for all of this. I haven't used any fine brushes or or any little, you know, single hair brushes or anything like that.
but you should really see a clear image of how those uh, braids are uh, twined, like intertwining and uh, coming together to create the braid. direction of those strokes it's really crucial can't emphasize it enough and if you're painting something like uh, animals animals fur the same principles apply Okay, so we're really starting to see it now. Uh, I like this point because I'm, I'm able to actually uh, visualize where this is going. But the one thing I haven't addressed yet is all those wispy hairs. Okay, I'm going to leave this for a bit. I'll come back to this, but I, wanted, I want to address what's happening out here where you see all the, the sunlit individual hairs and that sort of thing. In order for me to to keep those little little fine hairs, uh, you know, as as visible as they are, uh, I want to be able to um, preserve that from the background. I I could paint the background and just paint around all the hairs, but oh my goodness, that would be so difficult <laughs> or don't time consuming, right? So I am going to use. this uh, this type of a dip pen this was given to me many many years ago please don't ask me where I got it it's just but it's it's a standard pointy pen uh, that you can buy on Amazon right you can buy something very similar on Amazon it's just a, a nib pen or a dip pen and I'm going to use this with my masking fluid And this will give me lovely fine lines. So make sure your masking fluid is runny. You can see mine is very fluid. Uh, this one's a PBO, but it's not so much the brand of, of masking fluid that you're using as the consistency because they all get thick at some point. Uh, just the composition of masking fluid makes it... Um, have a short shelf life you know the the latex particles stick together and it just eventually will thicken up and then you can't thin it down at that point so you you need something that's fresh if yours is thick and gummy it's time to replace yours all right I'm going to dip in here make sure I don't have a big blob on the end so just touch the side of the edge there and I'm going to start masking off some of these individual hairs. Now I did that one very slowly just to show you the, the ease with which I can do these fine lines and I want to make sure I take this all the way into the white areas. Very important to take it all the way into the white areas otherwise it's a little bit like you having a tree branch not attached to the tree. <laughs> so you want to have the hair actually um, connected it to, to the hair or to the 
to the other parts of the hair. And these have all kinds of changes of direction, curls, all kinds of things going on. That just makes it look natural. I drew a few in, but I'm painting a lot more <clears throat> than I drew. Or I'm masking, I should say, not painting. All right, so there's a lot of that. There's some of this on this other side as well. I know that you can, somebody's going to tell me, oh, they, they have these masking nibs, these masking fluid with nibs and things like that. Somebody's going to tell me that, and I am familiar with those. Uh, they can be very useful, although I have found most in most cases that uh, those nibs end up clogging after a short while. Um, so I prefer this because I just wipe it off and I can use it again and again. And I don't have to worry about masking fluid clogging in it or anything like that. I didn't draw too much there because of the, uh, well, it's not really necessary, first of all, but also because um, with these yellow and light areas, I didn't want a lot of pencil lines showing. So I drew a few to give myself some guideline, but most of this is just freehand. always a curve of some kind. It's extremely rare for a hair to be absolutely poker straight. Keep the curves going. And it could be a little bit of a tangled mess, <laughs> but that's the way hair goes. Likewise, if, if in, in this part of the hair, I wanted to have a few sort of wispy stray hairs, I could do that. I could come in and put masking over, over this area here, for example. Let's put a couple of wispy hairs coming down and even up into the highlights here.
Time to wipe this off. It's getting a build up. All right, so wipe that off. Just keep going. Don't need to soap this. I know I've talked about using soap with masking fluid. Um, yeah, you don't need to, it does, the masking fluid won't stick to this. So you're, you're okay not to put soap on this. But I will, if I'm using a brush and I don't want to ruin the bristles of the brush, I will do that. But it just wipes off of this tool. Okay, so that's quite a bit of hair. I could probably continue adding more. Just add a little, a little more and then I'm going to just carry on. Let that dry and then I'll add in what I need. Now I haven't put her skin tones in down here on her neck or anything, so I probably won't need to uh, do a lot of this. But I'll do some because uh, I may still add the skin tones in. may not be able to get it done during the, the live, but I'll add it in when I post it on my social media. My social media is also listed in the comment section below the video. My Instagram and my Facebook pages. Uh, okay, I think that's enough. I'm going to wipe the, I'm going to close up my masking fluid and while that's drying, I can maybe start um, just adding in some of my darker darks now on the hair. You might think, oh, it's, it's done now, isn't it? Like that, that hair? No, I could go darker for sure. If I get a full value range, I'll really see those, those shapes really well. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now I'm getting a really dark brown. Back to my squirrel hairbrush and more building. Nice light touch, hardly you have to get used to not pressing on your brush too much. Um, utilize the way that the end of the brush fans out a little bit. Can you dilute masking with water? Not really. I mean, you can, you can add a drop or two if you need to thin it for spattering or something like that. But if it's starting to get thick and gummy, you cannot reactivate it with water. You can dilute it a little bit if it's fluid, but if it's getting thick, no, won't, won't help. Fan that out a little bit more. Now I will say this is something that does take some practice. All right, don't expect instant uh, success until you've practiced a bit uh, because you've got to find the right uh, consistency of paint, or right load in your brush, the right type of brush, the right touch and so on. All of this I've worked on dry paper though. Um, and in that sense, it's, it's sometimes very helpful because working on dry paper is a lot easier than working on wet paper where you don't have a lot of control. It's not that you don't have a lot of control, but it's more challenging for sure.
where the hair's really tucked in. That's where it's extra dark. filled in when I made that stroke it filled in too much so that told me my brush had too much water in it I needed to give it a blot on my paper towel again this is going to be easier if I turn this because it's always easier to pull a stroke towards yourself than it is away from yourself or sideways Yeah, um, the the way that I've uh, built up the colors here was starting off with the most golden yellowy tones. Those are the sunny, those ones will always look like they're in the sun. And then I'm getting, I'm, with the addition of brown, browns and blues, I'm cooling down the color as I get into the shadows. I'm just going to bring this over for a second so you can see my palette a little closer and you can see the consistency it's you know it's not watery but it is uh, like it's got a lot of pigment in it and it is got a, a, a fair amount of water Okay, she has a barrette or something, a clip or of some kind or some sort of a hair bobble on the end of her hair. It's hard to make out in the, in the photo, but um, I'm just kind of painting around it for now. All right, so it, it looks okay. It looks okay, but it looks, she still looks a little bit blonde. So if I use my brown color here and I I thin it down even more blot it I can sweep a little bit through here and you'll see that the blonde that light color will still sort of show through but this is really diluted color here and I can tone this down as I said it's always easy to tone things down it's getting it back that is really difficult um, these ones over here, I'm going to keep those nice and light because those are closest to the sun. To the sunlight that's hitting her hair. But I'm using a very, this is probably the wettest thing I've done so far. Just a light wash over top. And that is making her hair look a little bit more brown. Not quite as stark with the highlights. If you have bright highlights, it looks like that part's in the sun. But you still need to make the shape, so you still need the highlights. Right. All right, this masking fluid will be dry by now. So I'm going to mix up a green for my background. Nice easy way to make a nice dark green like this is Areolin. 
Payne's Gray gives me a nice, nice sort of olive green. And I'm going to start coming in here and filling this in. I'm working on dry here, but um, I'm still sort of wisping my brush. If you know what I mean by when I say wisping my brush, but um, I'm I'm letting this. I'm, I don't want to make just a cardboard line, so I'm flicking my brush in towards the the hair, but not over the white areas. Here we need a straight line, of course, for her shoulders. More yellow in some areas, more Payne's Gray in others. Now here we actually do see her neck line so I can paint that across this is where I'm looking forward to the big reveal when the masking fluid comes off to see how this actually turns out I think even a little bit of quinacridone gold in here would be nice. Connects to the colors in her hair. Just painting with water here now so that that stays a soft edge, makes it look uh, out of focus. In, in the distance, that sort of thing. Might go a little darker over here. Better dry that first though, because uh, part of that is probably dry and part of it's not, so I will make sure it's dry. not doing too bad in time. I mean, I usually take about an hour and a half for these demos. But I'm going to go a little darker here. Probably should have let that cool down a bit, but too late. A little bit of that quinacridone gold up here would be quite lovely too. Just mixes into the green. It doesn't, it's not just straight quinacridone gold. It's just enough to help connect those colors. Okay, and while that dries, I'm going to go one final time on her braids with uh, an even darker, like an extra dark value in her, in her hair.
and I will use this a little more sparingly. You can see that those extra darks could, can, oh, put my finger in the paint. Let's see if I can fix that now. <laughs> put my finger in it. So this is my darkest dark that I'm going to be able to put on here, so, which means obviously I have to have less water in it in order for this to be dark. But I've added more blue to this so that it becomes a little bit um, extra dark brown. Feather touch. Look at the impact of that extra dark, though. Might have thought, oh, it looks fine. Don't touch it. You'll wreck it. But honestly, if you don't get brave about some of these things, you'll never find out how realistic you can make it, like how believable you can make the texture. Your holding back might keep you from your best painting yet. The occasional sort of pull through um, is probably good. It helps to connect all of this. Just don't paint every stroke all the way through, just the occasional stroke. For example, here. If I put just a couple of strokes in there that go all the way through, it helps that to feel more connected. If this woman or if her hair were were red hair, like let's say she had this really nice red hair, uh, you would start off with probably a lot of gold and and orange tones before adding in any of this. I did mostly golds, but um, you would get probably a little more orange. And um, don't go too 
dark too fast, just build up with lots of reddish tones to make red hair. And as I said, you could have left it at an earlier stage if you wanted to keep the blonde look. Um, but I, as I mentioned, I have another demo on just painting blonde hair. I'll add that underneath the video after this is done. That and hopefully I can add that closed captioning. Okay, so I like her hair. I think I've got a real, um, it's got some depth and volume to it now. Uh, I can tone anything I want to. You know, if I still feel it's too bright, just wash a little color over it. If I want her hair to look a little darker still, just a little queen gold, a little burnt sienna or anything in that family. Keeps it very soft looking. Okay, so I like I like the tones now. It's it's got this real nice natural feel and you can definitely see those braids. All right, I'm going to dry this because you always want your paper fully dry before you start to remove masking fluid. Now, here's what I suspect is going to happen. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to find that, oh, it's not as yellow as I thought it would be. I can always come in and add some yellow. Okay, so I'm going to use a rubber cement pickup tool and Carefully, and I do mean carefully because maybe I have to paint back into here. Carefully remove the masking fluid. It might be yellow enough, we'll see, but I think I'm going to tone it a little bit anyway. Don't forget these ones in the hair. You see, I got some of these little ones in the hair here, which I can tone down if I want to. If they're too bright. And look how well that tool use uh, did uh, creating that highlight in the sun. We've got some over here. Always run your hand over to see if you've missed anything because you can always feel the masking fluid even if you can't see it. All right, not too bad, okay. So I might take a small brush. Let me see, I've got, um, this one's a, what is this, a seven, it's not too bad. Uh, I might take a little bit of quinacridone gold, maybe a little bit of that gamboge. And I could gently sweep over some of this and create a little bit more uh, gold in her hair, I suppose. I 
like it's good the way it is it, it turned out pretty well but I just think I could go one step further I'm gonna put in some gold streaks here now I'm, I'm not fanning out my brush this time I'm kind of using the point of my brush and my paint's mm -hmm. very diluted like it's I'm not putting in strong color, but it's enough to to shift it. I don't want to get too much green activated there. So I'm trying to stay in the spots that I already did, or at least some of them. You will find that it is a lot easier to paint hair that has uh, some light on it because you can clearly see the the highlight and shadow. If you can't clearly see the highlight and shadow, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to sort out all those shapes like like in her braid. Okay, while I have this, how about I take some of that brown and tone this down just a little bit there it's still there but it is more subtle okay so I think I'm done this demo let me zoom out so you can see the entire thing yeah and if if you still felt you needed to tone it down you could certainly tone it down but you won't be able to get it like really light again if you go too fast you know if you get impatient and you put too much in there like here for example I think that could be toned down just a little bit um, this part doesn't have as much sunlight on it so I would just brush over some of my warm tones in there to help connect that and that's you know fairly diluted watery kind of paint But there we go. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Um, she says applause. Uh, how the plated hair would feel. I'm not sure what you mean by plated. Um, anyway, I hope I hope you got something out of that one. Um, I, I really like all this stuff. If you can connect your hair to your background, uh, that's always a good idea. So next week, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing, but, uh, you know, you can pop your suggestions into the uh, chat if you would like to. And uh, I always, I always read everything you write, even if I don't get to do it while I'm actually doing the live. I do read everything and uh, I, I make notes of, of questions I haven't answered or, uh, or suggestions for upcoming videos. So... That's it for today. We will have uh, another one next Wednesday. That is 10 o'clock uh, Toronto time. You know, if you're in a different time zone, it's 10 o'clock Toronto time. And uh, we will see you then. All right. Thanks so much for joining. See you next week.